Hi, Chuck Woodbury with RVTravel.com, and I'm here with Gary Bunzer, the RV doctor. And Gary, what we're going to talk about now is a beginning RVer. What is the best kind of RV for them? <laughs> the beginning, what is the best kind of RV? The one that suits her, the, his or her needs perfectly. That's the best kind. You know, it's such a subject, subjective decision that needs to be made. It does require what I call due diligence, especially if it's a first-time buyer. Uh, number one, how are they going to use that RV? How much is their budget? Uh, do they already own, say, a, a healthy pickup truck? Mm -hmm. uh, do they want to be able to walk from the passenger compartment to the bathroom on, on the side of the road? Or do they have to get out of the truck and into the trailer? Uh, with all the different types available that are out there, literally everybody can be satisfied at some point in time. Uh, but it does take to, uh, due diligence to figure out exactly what my family needs uh, in an RVing uh, uh, vehicle, whether it be a motorized or a towable. Number one, that's the two th one of the first two questions you have to respond to. Do I want to tow an RV uh, or do I want to drive an RV? The motorized, motorhomes, class A, class B, class C. Uh, the towables include your conventional travel trailer, hybrid trailers, fifth wheels, folding camping trailers, pickup campers are actually considered a towable RV because mm. it's in the bed of the pickup oh, truck. Okay. So the motorized are your class A, class B, class C, uh, and for, we should maybe go into that, the class A's are built on a, on a, on a singular fl uh, frame and they could be upwards of uh, 45 feet long. Class C's are built on typically a van type chassis. Um, yours is a class C motorhome, as you know. Mm -hmm. Class B vans are considered a motorhome as well. Uh, if they have 12 volt electricity or propane gas or something like that built into the living portion of that van. Some of them have expanded roofs or extended lengths, uh, but they're all considered a, a, a regular B van. It's like driving a regular van. For someone that's uh, maybe uh, at first uh, glance a little hesitant about the length of an RV, maybe a Class B would be the van or the, the motorized unit that they would start out in. I think that, you know, you've got uh, pop-up trailers for great for weekends in the summer months when, you know, it doesn't get too cold, inexpensive mm -hmm. among the least expensive. Then you've got travel trailers, small, longer, lightweight that can be pulled by a passenger car. Yep. Somebody has an SUV, they don't have to go buy a, a bigger vehicle. Then you've got a full weight travel trailer, a little more space. The fifth wheel, um, for people that don't know what a fifth wheel is, that's a uh, one where the, it extends over the pickup truck. They're very stable driving down the road. They get easy a little, to tow. Easy to tow. The, the, the distance between the front of the truck and the back of the RV is shorter overall mm -hmm. because you've got part of it over the top of the pickup. Um, and then you've got the motorized, the Class C, and people will recognize those because they have, usually have a bed over the top mm -hmm. of the cab. Um, and you explain what that is, the Class A's, which are the big, the bigger... Uh, Conventional you know, motorized. So they all... Yeah. It, it, so the, what it boils down to is what are people going to use it for? Are they just going to go camping for the weekend? They're going to live in it full time. And so uh, that, I think that that is one of the very first things that people, they must decide on the type of RV Absolutely. that's going to be best for their, you know, the advantage of a trailer, for example, is you go to the campground and then you've got the pickup to do your sightseeing. All you're running around your now, day trips. If you buy a motorhome, once you go into the campground and set up, what are you going right. to, you, gonna, you don't want to get a, you want to go to the general store? What are you going to do? you got to unhook everything. you got to unhook it. Yeah. So a lot of our, uh, uh, motorhome uh, owners will bring tow a small car behind. Some people have motorcycles. I carry a couple bicycles. That'll get me a couple miles. <laughs> Good um, for you. You know, Better yeah, you and, and, a little, and, a little, and a little exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and if I need a car for a week when I'm on a long trip, I just rent a car. So sure. that, that's an option, too. So people, and I think that's the advantage of going to an RV show, and, you know, like the Seattle RV show that we have up here, is that people can look at all these things and they can sit there and they can kind of imagine, what are we going to do with this? Sure. If they're going to live full time in it, they can justify spending more. If they're just going to be out for a week here and weekends, then they can get a less expensive unit mm -hmm. that'll be perfectly fine, um, uh, have all the, the creature comforts uh, for a lot lower price and they mm -hmm. can cost justify it better too. Exactly. So really there's... That's why going to an RV show is, is so well, great. That's ca that's got to be my number one reason to go to a show, to be able to see all of the different types of RVs that are available. Uh, one thing we didn't mention was the, uh, uh, the, the tailgate 
RV that if you if you go out to the sand, if you if you do a lot of sand toys, have the toy, toy haulers, yeah. the toy haulers with you know with that back door that folds down as your loading ramp, uh, boats, uh, everything I've seen in those toy haulers. Uh, another, it depends a lot on your hobbies as well. Mm -hmm. So it's so subjective that it takes some serious uh, due diligence to actually narrow it down. And then uh, I always say go to an RV show with three or four coaches in mind mm -hmm. and then look at them, sit down in them, stand in the shower, sit down on the toilet. Obviously, at an RV show, you're not going to use the toilet. Hopefully not. But uh, yep. sit on the toilet, lay down on the bed. You can do all this at a show because you can find out if that indeed is the right type of an RV for your family. Yeah. And uh, it's so subjective that, gosh, there's no... There's no real answer to which one is the best. The best one is the best one for you. Yeah, and I think going to an RV show as opposed to going to a dealer, dealer by dealer. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a temptation sometimes to just jump right in and you see something you like, you buy it. A lot of right. people will buy just based on the interior. They won't even think about that. They won't get underneath and look at the plumbing and how well it's put right. together. Right. With an RV show, you know, you can really see a lot of them, get a lot of of, of impressions of RVs and, and, and begin to, to see that, oh, this manufacturer, I don't like the way they do it, but this one's good. Right. And I think you just, you can see a lot more faster and at least get to stage one or get a great deal because the prices are, are generally really good at these shows. If, sure. And so people will come on a Thursday, they'll come back on a Friday, and maybe on Sunday, they, they've had four days to go home and think about it. Sure, and, sure. Uh, but whatever. Um, uh, uh, and, you know, not just a first RV, of course, but uh, uh, buyers that are going to upgrade, get another one. Absolutely. Um, so, so um, you know, like you say, due diligence, um, but see, look at a lot of them, and that's why an RV show is great. Best place to do it, folks. See every type of an RV at the Seattle RV Show, and do your homework. That's all we can say.